All right, so let's focus on these path number one and let's go step by step and also give an example to show how we go from a linear circuit all the way down to your response waveform. So the first thing that we're going to do is to do this uh, Laplace transform on top of your, our linear circuit so we can have our transformed circuit and we're going to use S domain models for that. So how can you see S domain models? Just simply see as a way of going to your time domain and try to substitute these components, capacitor, resistors, your voltage and current sources by the respective Laplace component and using this Laplace transformation. All right, so what are the components that we're going to focus on? We're going to focus on the capacitors, inductors, and resistors. We're also going to focus on current sources and voltage sources. And we're going to focus on step inputs that are normally represented by a switch in a circuit. Another important thing to know is the concept of impedance. And you can see impedance as kind of the resistance in the S domain. But it's a little bit more than resistance because now we're going also to represent our capacitors and inductors in this domain. But again, you can see as the capacitors and inductors and the resistors as all as resistors in the S domain. So let's see an example. Um, the impedance in the S domain for a resistor is just going to be the resistor. The impedance for an inductor is going to be L times S and the impedance on a capacitor is going to be 1 over the capacitance times s. It's important to emphasize that these values of impedance for the inductor and the capacitor are with initial condition set to zero, so they don't have any initial energy. All right, so let's go over those S domain models. So if you have in time a, a voltage source, that becomes just your voltage source in the S domain. If you have a current source, also you get also the current source in the S domain. If you have a step, uh, we normally represent as the U, U of T or a switch in your circuit, then the respective S domain is going to be 1 over S. If you have that step applied to a voltage source, so let's say your voltage is 5 volts and you are applying a step to that uh, power supply or voltage source, in the S domain you get those 5 volts multiplied by 1 over S. The same thing applies for your current sources. If you apply a step to your current source, you get the respective current source value times 1 over S. Resistors are straightforward, they don't change much, so in time you have Ohm's law over here and in S domain you also have Ohm's law and you just substitute by the respective R value. Now things start getting a little bit more interesting when you have a capacitor. If a capacitor does not have any initial conditions, meaning no voltage at the beginning, all you need to do is to have the voltage across the capacitor in the S domain, the current flowing through the capacitor in the S domain. But now, instead of having C, you're going to represent the respective or substitute with the respective impedance, which is 1 over Cs. Now, in this domain, the beauty of this is that we can just treat these as a normal resistive circuit and we can apply Ohm's law to find the voltage across the capacitor, which is the current times the respective impedance. Now, if that capacitor has initial conditions, so an initial voltage, I'm calling here K, there are two different ways of representing that on the Laplace S domain. The first one, so notice that I have my capacitor, my impedance, my current, and my voltage across, across the capacitor, that now it's a combination of two elements. And now I have this new part over here that it's what we call a voltage source that it's dependent on that initial condition. Now we are in the Laplace S domain, so if you apply normal, let's say KVL, you know that the voltage across these two elements, VC of T, is equal to Ohm's law on this component plus the voltage drop on this initial voltage source. 
Well, that is another way of representing this capacitor with initial conditions in the S domain. And that way is with this current source. And notice here that this current source um, has the initial condition also represented over there. Pay attention to the direction of that current source. This is important because when I apply, let's say KCL at this node, I know that IC plus this current source is going to be equal to the current flowing through this capacitor, which can be found by applying Ohm's law, which is this voltage divided by this impedance. All right, inductors follow kind of the same thought process. No initial conditions, simple as having your inductor and you substitute for the respective impedance LS and apply Ohm's law and you know the current times that impedance equals to the voltage across that inductor. For an initial condition, so an initial current, notice here now that if I represent that initial condition as a voltage source, now the polarization is opposite from what you had on the capacitor and it's L times that current, uh, initial current. And now just apply normal KVL, the voltage drop across these two elements or VL of S is equal to Ohm's law, uh, the voltage drop across this I, uh, LS minus um, this voltage source. I can also represent these as a current source, that initial condition, and now the current is leaving the node. And if I apply KCL on this node, we notice that the total current is equal to the sum of these two currents on these two branches. Ohm's law to find the current on the inductor, that one is a current source. So you just plug it over there. All right, so let's go over an example so we can solidify these concepts. And in the time domain, I have the following circuit. So two power supplies, one at 20, one at four. And then you have a resistor inductor and another resistor connected with the capacitor. And then we have a switch that we're going to switch between point A and B. That's where we create the transient. And uh, I have the false stat circuit. If you guys want to press here, you can see the circuit working. And um, when we apply this transform circuit, we're going to apply these S domain models to these components. So pause the video for a couple of minutes and try to see if you can um, do that. All right. So if we apply the S domain, we get the following circuit in the Laplace. Our resistors are going to be the same value, so 10 ohms and 3 ohms. Then our capacitors and inductors, if you notice, they have an initial voltage and an initial current. So notice here that when the switch is here, the circuit is going to be closed in this way and the capacitor is going to accumulate energy in terms of an electrical field and the voltage across the capacitor is going to be equal to 4 volts. And that's why we have here this initial uh, voltage uh, source represented here with the capacitor. Then I have the capacitor with the respective um, impedance. So remember it's one over CS and C is one over 20. So that's why I get this. And on this side of the, of the circuit, you also see that the circuit closes this way and the inductor is going to also have an initial current which is going to be equal to L times IL if I represent that as a voltage source. All right, so what else do we need to see? Um, I have a switch, so when I have here the switch and I flip it, I create a transient, so I create that step input, and we know step is one over S in the Laplace domain, and that's represented here on this power supply, so 20 over S, and um, this voltage source is just simply four because the transient is happening when I switch from point A to point B. Uh, notice that point A, when I switch, becomes an open circuit, so you still have 4 volts on that power supply. It's not going to influence anything on the capacitor when the transient happens. So that's why we keep this for uh, the way that it is.